the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Well, I'm glad to see so many people here. I'll be honest, more people than I expected to be here on this uh, crazy kind of weather day. And I'm glad to see people were able to brave the elements outside and make it. And because you are troopers today and you didn't sleep in and you didn't take the excuse of the rain or the cold or the ice, I have good news for you. Very good news for you. The best news in the whole wide world for you because today, Sunday, is the Sunday of good news. Because the gospel that was just read to us is the gospel of the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel came down to the Virgin and gave her the best news in the history of the whole wide world. He said, I come to bring good news. Okay? And that good news, of course, is the birth, or I should say the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh who is about to be born from the Virgin in a little bit. This is good news. Obviously, you understand why this is good news. This is salvation. This is forgiveness. This is remission of sin. This is opening the door to heaven. This is, if you've ever read, uh, there's a great book by St. Athanasius called On the Incarnation. Great book where he spoke about the divine dilemma. And he talked about how God had a problem on his hands. You didn't think that God could have a problem. Well, God had a problem. God had a problem in that he loved man. And he wanted man to be with him in heaven. But man sinned, so because man sinned, man couldn't go to heaven. So God had a problem. I don't know what to do. Should I punish man like I said I would, or should I go against what I said I would do and let man into heaven? God had a problem. Well, on this day, the problem is solved. Because in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's why today is a day of good news. But let me ask you a question. When you have good news to share, let's say you're God. You can be God for a day. How would you share this good news with the world? You had the best news in the whole wide world. How would you choose to share it with the world? Press conference? Ad in the paper? Full page ad or something like that? Do a TV show kind of a thing? Video cameras? Maybe halftime of the Super Bowl, try to rent some space on the TV? Commercial ad, something like that? Something big with fireworks, banners, balloons? Something big is how we would announce kind of news like this. But God in a strange way, decides to announce the best news in the history of the world. All the other good news in the history of the world combined isn't one drop compared to this good news. He decides to announce it in a strange way. God sends this good news in the form of a baby? A baby? That's the good news? Okay, now here's the thing about a baby. I'm not, I, babies are great, okay? And there's a lovely one out there who's just voicing his opinion about the subject. Okay, Babies are wonderful. But is a baby the best way to announce this good news? Why not an earthquake? Send an earthquake. People will feel an earthquake. Is a baby that's born in a little manger in a city which no one even knows where that city is. The city of Bethlehem, way over there somewhere in the corner. And that is the good news all the way over there? Why not an earthquake? Why not thunder and lightning? Why not written in the sky? Why not a press release of some sort? Why not to send Jesus, a king, walk down the streets, not of Bethlehem, who cares about Bethlehem, Jerusalem, the city, media, balloons, horses. Why not send his news in that kind of way? You know why? God was very wise. when God planned to send the Savior of the world and the good news of salvation in the form of a baby. Because a baby is the one thing that you cannot ignore. Earthquake can happen. I can feel it. And I can forget about it. September 11th was very bad. We don't think about it most days. But if there's a baby in my house, boy, there's not a day that I wake up without knowing there's a baby in my house. There's not a day that I go to sleep at night without knowing there's a baby in my house. I sit down to eat. The baby says something. My meals have changed. A baby affects everything that you do. You want to go to the mall real quick, go pick up something. When you got a baby, nothing happens quick. Okay? baby affects everything that you do when you sleep when you wake up what you do in between meals it affects your neighbors it affects your social life it affects your job there's nothing nothing that a baby doesn't affect and a baby is the one thing that if you ignore it what does the baby do it gets louder okay and if you ignore it some more it gets even louder and somehow they have a way of calling to one another to they, they join forces together when you have a baby, as the virgin realized today, life is never the same again. I can get an 
earthquake. I can get a this and that, and I can go on with my life. But there's a baby. Life is going to be changed. For the virgin, her life was changed today. In a spiritual way, of course, but also in a very physical, practical way. Started probably getting morning sickness. Feet started swelling up. Okay? Started to get, you know, the munchies for late night snacks. I don't know, whatever the pregnant women go through. She starts, her life was never the same from this moment ever again. You know what? As we prepare to celebrate the nativity, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, I think God wants to send a baby in our life too. Not that kind of baby. <laughs> okay? I think God wants to send another kind of baby. Wouldn't sure he was talking last week in the sermon, and he was saying how, like, when we talk about celebrating Christmas or the nativity, we're not just, like, celebrating a birthday party for someone who's 2,000 years old. Like, we celebrate birthday parties every year. We're not just saying, hey, happy birthday to Jesus, and we sing a song, and we have some cake. We're not just celebrating a birthday party. Just like we talked about before Easter, when we, when we have an, a, a feast in the church, we're not commemorating or saying, wow, this was a beautiful day, and we go on with our life. We're reliving, or a better word than reliving, I'll say we live it in a new way. What I mean by that is just as 2,000 years ago, there was a baby born to the Virgin Mary, and her life was never the same again, ever the same again, God wants to send a baby into our life. To be born in my life. So that my life is never the same. Come this Feast of the Nativity as well. <clears throat> We're not just celebrating rituals. When we celebrated resurrection, we celebrated Christ giving us a new life. And we talked about all last year in Holy Week and Easter, about how we want to have a new life. And we want to, to be die with Christ and to rise with Christ. Well, here we're celebrating nativity, and we're talking about something new as well. That we want something new in our life. We want a baby to be born in our life. Or put another way, what God wants to do is add a new something to my relationship with Him. A new aspect to my relationship with Him needs to be born. Or a new phase in my relationship with Him needs to be born. If Christmas comes and goes, and all I did was clap my hands, sing a few songs, and eat a piece of cake, what have I accomplished? Is that what God wants to accomplish every year when we celebrate? We fast for all these days so we can clap our hands, sing a few songs, eat some meat, and go home? God wants to be born to my life in a new way. Everything in the Bible talks about God, talks about how He likes things new. He doesn't like old, routine, boring stuff. He likes new stuff. So when we celebrate Christmas, is a chance that He says, I want to come into, a new, into your life in a new way, or a new phase, or a new aspect. And that's why he sends a baby. Because you can't ignore it. He's not sending an email. Email I can put in my junk mail. He's not sending a text message. I can ignore that. He's not sending a memo or a report. He's sending a baby. And he wants that baby to be there in my life to always remind me. The most important thing to know about this baby, when the virgin, when the angel came to the virgin and announced to her this good news, the most important fact that the angel told to her about the baby is his name. And she said, or he said to the virgin, his name is Jesus. <clears throat> now, the name Jesus, okay, you know it means God saves or Savior, okay? We look at the name Jesus and we know that's God. But at the time, Jesus didn't mean God. Okay, Jesus was a, a common name, okay? And it meant, like I said, God saves. You know, Joshua in the Old Testament has the same root as Jesus, okay? And in the book of Acts, you read one time, um, uh, St. Paul met a sorcerer guy whose name was Simon Bar-Jesus. Okay? Bar-Jesus means the son of Jesus. So Jesus was a name, like Ed or Bill or Joe or whatever. But back then in the day, names had significance. So when the virgin was asking to the angel, or I'm not saying, when the angel was saying to the virgin, this is going to be a special child. What's his name going to be? His name's going to be Jesus. His name's going to be Jesus? He wasn't telling her just to give him a random name. He was saying, this is the Savior. This is the one who's going to save you from your problem. This is the one who's going to save you from your burden. This is the one who's going to save... Okay, we know how he saves the whole world. But I'm not talking about save the world today. I'm talking about my baby. I'm not talking about the world's baby. I'm talking about he's coming. God is saying, I want to send a baby into your life. God, who's the baby that's coming into my life? He's Jesus. What do you mean he's Jesus? He's coming to save you. Save you from what? What is Jesus coming to save me from this Christmas? Don't say save me from sin. 
Because if that's the answer, we did that last year, and we did that the year before, so then he's wasting his time. Then, if that's the case, he's coming this year to save me from sin and to give me salvation, then we're a church of dead rituals, and we worship a dead God, not a living God. Because we do the same thing over and over. God saved me from sin. We did that before. Okay? And if you don't believe that God saved you from sin, then you need to back up a little bit. He saved us from sin. But he's coming again. Why? To save you from fill in the blank. What's the blank? From whatever. To save you from your burden. To save you from the bondage you're in. To save you from this area which you've been struggling and praying and crying and fasting and beating your head against the wall for years. Coming to save you for that one. If you were paying attention today during the Acts of the Apostles, very short reading. And you remember what it was about? Acts of the Apostle. Anyone. It was four verses. Give me one word to describe what the Acts was about. Anyone. Not pointing at Mark. Pointing at the picture right here. It was about Moses in the burning bush. That's, oh, it was just four verses. Oh, I have to read it now. I wasn't going to read it, but now you made me read it. Listen. When 40 years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, being Moses, in a flame of fire in the bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight. As he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have certainly seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. God is appearing to Moses when he's in the wilderness, burning bush. We sing about it all day and all night during the month of Kiach. We love the song and this and that. God is appearing to him and saying what? Saying exactly what the angel said to the virgin. I'm coming to be born in your life. Who are you? I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. I'm coming to save you. That's what that verse that I just read where he said there that I'm coming to save you where it says I've certainly seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt I've heard their groaning have come down to deliver them I'm Jesus I heard your groaning I heard your oppression I saw you in Egypt Egypt okay this is close enough I saw you in Egypt I saw you suffering I saw you crying I saw you groaning for all those years and I'm Jesus and I'm coming to deliver you Make no mistake, we're not a dead church. We don't celebrate birthday parties. We don't celebrate Jesus just coming to save us from sin from many, many years ago. We celebrate, not even celebrate, we are preparing for him to come into my life in a new way, in a special way, as a baby that I can't ignore and that's going to be with me everywhere I go to save me from whatever that I may be going through, my groaning, my oppression, God wants to be incarnate in my life and in your life in a new way. To the virgin, to Moses, he sent a burning bush. To the virgin, he sent an angel. To you, well, sorry. You didn't get a burning bush or an angel. But hey, take it anyway, even though the messenger may not be any of those two things. He's sending me to you. And he's saying, I got good news for you. Today's good news. Jesus wants to be born in your life. Our job is to do like the virgin did. Virgin did one very important thing today. Most important thing in the history of the whole wide world that she did. And because she did it, all of us are blessed for all the rest of eternity. If you were to look at the response of the virgin to the angel, to this unbelievable, unthinkable news, what she did, she believed it. That's why... Later on, we're going to read, Blessed is she who believed. We're going to read that later on, the, the next coming weeks. The most important quality of the virgin show today, angel came to her and said, You're a virgin, you're going to have a baby. Every one of us would laugh and say, That's the funniest thing in the history of the world. Because of all the things that God could do for me in my life, come on, how, how is he going to give a baby to a virgin? Like, just be logical here. Maybe we just say it so often that we, we, we don't realize what we're saying. A virgin, a young lady who's never known a man, is now going to be pregnant. The unthinkable, the unimaginable, the stuff that in her wildest dreams she couldn't have imagined that God could do something like that. And that's what the angel comes and says to her. 
what would you respond if God came and said something crazy like that to you and sent an angel to you? How did the virgin respond when the angel came and said this news to her? What did she say? She said something very important. At the very end of the gospel, she said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And we say, oh, that's great. But what did she say before that? What she said before that was just as important as what she said after that. You know what she said? Very good. Angel came to her. How can I know? Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? Faith or not faith? Faith or not faith? It sounds like not faith. She's saying, ah, how can this be? No, you know what? If it was not faith, she would say this cannot be. The most important word there was the word how. How shows faith. She says, I know it's going to happen. You said it's going to happen. I believe you. But tell me, how is this thing going to happen? None of us would say, how is this going to happen? We'd say, yeah, right. Someone came to your house and said, hey, tomorrow you're going to be pregnant and you're going to have a baby and he's going to be the son of the most high. Yeah, right, buddy. Next house. Next house. What, are you trying to collect money? Yeah, right. When any of us say, tell me, how is this thing going to take place? It takes great faith to say that. It takes incredible faith to say, how can this thing happen? She believed, even though she didn't understand. Okay, how shows she didn't understand, but it shows that she did believe. And that reminds me of another character who was mentioned in today's readings. Another very, very famous character of faith was mentioned twice in today's readings. And because you didn't pay attention to the Acts, I'm going to make you guess who it was. Not John, not Elizabeth, no. Someone was mentioned in the Pauline as well as in the Acts. Old Testament. Not Moses. Abraham, very good. Abraham was mentioned. Someone said it behind me. I think it was a good sure. <laughs> That's why he gets the big bucks. He remembers the readings. Okay? Abraham was mentioned. Romans chapter 4, verse 3. It said, What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham, if you think, Abraham is a great man of faith. What did Abraham? He did the same thing that the virgin did today in today's gospel. God came to Abraham, and when he came to Abraham, remember, there was no scriptures when he came to Abraham. Abraham was the beginning of the beginning. There was no Moses. There was no David. There was no Solomon. There was no angel. There was no nothing. The only thing before Abraham, there was nothing. God came to him and said, I'm Jesus. You're going to bear a child, and his name is going to be, I'm going to be Jesus for you. Abraham said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm going to solve your problem, Abraham. I'm going to give you children. I'll make you father of nations. Abraham, what did Abraham do? Abraham believed God, even when he didn't understand God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And I think that the virgin had the same situation. God came to her, said, I am coming to your life, and I'm going to be Jesus. Save you from whatever it is that you're struggling with. I want to be born in your life in a new way, in a way that you can't ignore. Now, it's our turn. Make no mistake about it. We are preparing not for a birthday party. We are preparing for Jesus to come. He's coming. And that's the message. That's the message of the month of Kiach. Okay? This month of preparation that we have. And that's why we fast. Because He is coming. The question is not, is He coming? The question is, are you ready? Are you ready for His coming? The most important thing to arm yourself with as He's coming is what the Virgin had, which is faith. Or this belief. Like Abraham had. That Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. That you say in your heart that you know what? I know that he wants to come in my life and I believe he can change something. Not just change my day. Because a baby doesn't change your day. That makes you a babysitter. When you have a baby, a baby doesn't change your day. A baby changes your life. Okay? And I can say that I believe he wants to come in my life. Change some aspect of my life. I've been celebrating Christmas for 50 years the same way and the same feta and the same kofta and the same this. I don't care about that stuff this year. This year, I'm preparing to celebrate in a new way. He wants to come to my life in a new way. Change my life in a new way. Give me some new aspect in my relationship with him. And I want to believe it. And if you do that, then at the end, we'll say, now, put my name, Buna Anthony, believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Just like it's
said for Abraham for the virgin. Like I said, God is sending him a baby and he's saying his name is Jesus. His name is not prophet or good teacher. Remember the gospel two weeks ago, the rich man who thought his name was good teacher? His name is Jesus. And there's nothing that he can't save you from. And if you don't believe that, go back and read the gospel today. Son of the Most High, the power of the highest will overshadow him. Throne of his father, King David, forever and ever. And that's who God wants to send into your life and mine. Glory be to God forever.